Well, we had to go on a late night rescue mission last night, didn't we, Odie? Da, 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 da. Tiny. Forgot that her diesel car needs to have diesel in it. Turns out it doesn't run very far on gas. But my goal is to see, can we drain the gas, get it all purged out, get diesel flowing through it, and see if we can get it running and see if the engine is okay. I doubt there's any major damage. But I'm thinking we probably want to preemptively change that high-pressure fuel pump before she shells out. That's weird. It says diesel. It's not gas. I don't know if we're going to get a hose down there and pump out or if it'll get stuck. I'm also going to preemptively say I probably have no business touching this car. I know nothing about working on Beamers. As you guys know, I work on old scrap. So we're going to try to work our way through this, figure it out, and see what we can make happen. Kind of hoping old trusty Milwaukee here will fit in there. Let's see what happens. It's like they make it so you can't steal gas. The next big challenge seems to be getting to the fuel pump, which the fuel pump on this is underneath the car. If it was so what I did is I pulled this seat up, and this is all just straight Google knowledge. Don't think I know anything. Oh. I'm going to have to unhold, unbolt the seat belt there so I can actually get the seat cushion out of my way. And that's over the fuel tank and the fuel sender. All right, so we got this hose clamp from hell off. Got the little fuel pickup doohickey out loose. Now we can jam the hose down in there and suck out some gasmoline. Oh, there's gasmoline. That is not diesel. Well, when you got a bunch of slightly diesel gas, you gotta just open up your own gas station. So we got the pump over here. We're all set up, ready to go. We just need any customers that happen to drive by. Sir, sir, do you need a fill up? Hey, can we get some gas over here? I got number 82. No, you got 93, bud. 93? Like with, 1993? 1% diesel gas. <laughs> Buster Joe, you ready for some gas? It's no different than oil for a two-stroke, really, that, that percentage. Stage two of draining the tank. I've hose clamped the hose to our other hose. We're gonna send it into the, the bucket. Let's see if we get any more. I think it has to try cranking. So in an effort to save cranking this thing a bajillion times, I unplugged what I highly suspected is the fuel pump and it seems to be because now it's not pumping any. What I'm gonna do is just jump 12 volt power to the fuel pump and just manually pump this tank out. I got some mechanics wire that's maybe smaller. Still don't know if it's small enough. All right, we're gonna give the magical start stop button to the hot side. And this will be the ground side. Crappy Industries goes beamering. But either we're gonna blow some up or we're not. Oh, I hear, I hear a fuel pump. I hear two. Hey, is the uh, look at that? Is the tube in the bucket? No, probably should do that. <laughs> well, that thing's got some flow. The engine sounds a whole lot happier in this method. <laughs> the computer doesn't even know we're cranking it 35,000 times. I guess this is how they prevent you from cranking an engine for 35 minutes. My thumbs get tired. So we're here getting more gas because we didn't like how much gas we got out. We thought maybe we could use a little extra gas. Bud, what are you doing? Oh, there's your problem. <laughs> it's very well sealed. It didn't quite have enough gas in it, so we're putting in another five gallons of gas. Flashing. I see the fumes coming out of the pipe. I hear the fuel pumpy. Oh boy. Can you tell how much gas and how much diesel that seems like? Seems like a lot of gas right now. 
Because we got the whole fuel filter and fuel pump to work out. We definitely should have used cherry flavor diesel. It would have been much easier to tell what we had. But that's illegal, and we don't do that. So I'm hooking up the fuel transfer fuel pump up here to the CP4 high pressure fuel pump line again. And we're going to go get us some more diesel gas. Ah, diesel gas. So that's 93? No, I think that's diesel. It says diesel, I use diesel. So much easier than five gallon cans. So we've completely filled the car up with actual diesel now. It took 21 gallons because the tank was pretty much as bone dry as we could get it with the transfer pump. So we're 99.9% .9 diesel. I want to pull off the each of the little two pipes going from the common rail down to each injector, get all that flushed out, get all the gas out of there. I don't know about flushed out, drain all the gas out of the rail, and then I want to try to run the transfer pump again. I don't know if it'll push through the CP4 high pressure fuel pump, but we're going to find out if it'll push through the fuel pump, if it'll make it all the way up to the rail and flush out the rail with the fuel as well. Then we're going to hook up all the high pressure pipes back up, see if it'll run, I guess. We're going to try to pop this little Christmas tree dealio off and see if we can get this blanket taken off the back. I guess to change the injectors on this thing, all you have is one e-torx. The injectors are right there. Couldn't ask for anything easier as far as that goes. Start busting off some injection lines. That is straight gasoline. Nailed it. So what a common rail means, if you guys don't know what a common rail means, is like on an old school diesel, all of our old mechanical D8s, TD25s, things like that. There's, say, six different injection lines for the six cylinders. And each one, there's one pump that's on a camshaft. And when it needs fuel, the camshaft comes up and hits that plunger, and it puts fuel in at the right time. On a common rail, you have your high-pressure fuel pump. In this case, it's this guy down here, rear-driven off the back of the engine. And it is literally a common rail in that this pipe here, this pipe on the top of the engine, it is always pressurized and it's very high pressurized. I think these common rails run at like 20,000 to 30,000 PSI of pressure. And the injector here is electronic and whenever it wants fuel, the injector is pulsing. So the, the way that it meters the fuel going into the engine is how many pulses the injector actually hits with. So they can actually do up to seven injections, like seven different burns during one firing sequence. I think those are the numbers anyhow. But the reason that these have kind of come along and became a thing is due to emissions. These can control the flame. So by doing the different pulses, they can kind of start the fire, increase the fire, and keep it going. Versus on a mechanical system, you don't have that control. So although these came due to emissions, they are way better, way more controllable, tunable, all those things. So if you don't have the emissions part of these, these modern diesels are awesome is basically what it comes down to. But that's the gist of how this system works. You have one high-pressure fuel pump. Pressurizes this common rail. The injectors are all getting fed off of their little tubes and have pressure at all times. Whenever the computer calls for fuel, it pulses to the injector at the appropriate time and even multiple times per cycle, it's pulsing, getting the injector to fire the correct amount of fuel at the correct time. I'm gonna tighten the rest of these back down and we're just gonna prime the rail through that front number one tube. So I'm not sure if the little low pressure transfer pump has the ability to push through the high pressure pump or not, but we're gonna find out. Hit it, John boy. Okay. Oh, something's happening. Oh, we got her. We got nice looking diesel gas at the end of the rail. 
kind of like it must have primed it right through the high pressure. All right, I think you're good. Woo! So we've unhooked our rigged up fuel pump power 2000, and I'm going to plug this back into the fuel pump control module, which is here under the back seat. Ready? We got Big John ready to try it. Contact. No way. That's what I'm talking about. Looks like we don't have any leaks or anything. It couldn't sound any better than that. Test driving. All right, Sam, how's the test drive going? So far, so good. We're not walking yet. I think, you know, we got nothing's mad. Everything seems to work properly. I don't know as far as the longevity of this high pressure fuel pump, how that would hold up. I think maybe changing that high pressure fuel pump just kind of preemptively because then it won't shell out and take out the injectors and everything. So changing that may be a good idea, but I also don't know how much it matters. I, I keep telling myself this thing only drove a mile with the gas in it, so I don't know how much damage could have really been done in that time. We'll see what she decides to do with it. For now, I think it runs just fine. Thank you guys for watching.